Welcome to episode 129 of George's Random Astronomical Object. Every episode, I run a random number generator to select random astronomical coordinates in the sky, and I then search for an astronomical object near those coordinates and talk about what makes the object so interesting to astronomers. So, I will now turn on the random number generator. The random number generator has returned the coordinates of 9 hours, 7 minutes, 57.8 seconds for ascension, and negative 37 degrees, 13 minutes, 17 seconds declination. The coordinates for this episode point to the Pixis cluster in the constellation Pixis. I think a pixie constellation would be rather cool, but that is not what the word Pixis means. Instead, Pixis is supposed to represent a compass, as in a magnetic compass used by sailors, and not as in the type of thing used to draw circles. This is another weird constellation invented by the weird 18th century astronomer Nicolas Louis de la Caille to fill in blank parts of the sky. And of course, it looks as much like a compass as any other random collection of dots. So, let's get back to the Pixis cluster. This object is a globular cluster. These types of clusters are spheres of old stars that orbit outside the plane of the Milky Way in our galaxy's halo. While a lot of globular clusters have been known about for a century or more, the Pixis cluster was only discovered in 1995. Ronald Weinberger discovered this object and a few others using the old-fashioned technique of staring for very long times at photographic plates to try to find interesting things. But it took follow-up observations with more modern digital instrumentation to confirm that Weinberger had indeed found an interesting object. The Pixis cluster is kind of wimpy for a globular cluster. It has a mass of only 30,000 times the mass of the Sun, which could be interpreted as meaning that it has approximately 30,000 stars. Given that globular clusters typically contain up to a million stars, the mass of the Pixis cluster seems really small, and this is part of the reason why it was not discovered until 1995. The other reason the cluster was not discovered until 1995 is that because it is located really, really far away from Earth. This is actually what makes the Pixis cluster a bit unusual from your everyday average globular cluster. The cluster is located 119,000 light years or 36.5 kiloparsecs from Earth and 126,000 light years from the center of the galaxy. Its orbit is also very elliptical, bringing the cluster as close as about 98,000 light years to the center of the Milky Way then taking it out to a distance of approximately 330,000 light years. For context, the distance from the Earth to the Large Magellanic Cloud, which is the largest dwarf galaxy orbiting the Milky Way, is 161,000 light years. So the Pixis Cluster is basically traveling in its orbit around the Milky Way to distances that are further away than entire dwarf satellite galaxies. At this point, I tried looking up some sort of technical definition for the difference between a globular cluster and a dwarf galaxy, and it was a bit difficult to find any good discussion about this topic. Although it was rather easy to find some rather bad discussions about this topic. One of the more thoughtful discussions was actually listed on Reddit, although I also found a couple of scientific articles that also try to address this topic. A lot of people would say that one difference between a globular cluster and a dwarf galaxy is its size. But that's kind of lame given that really small dwarf galaxies are equivalent in mass to really large globular clusters. <laughs> 
I also read some arguments about the centers of globular clusters being more dense than the centers of dwarf galaxies, but I don't buy that argument either. However, one argument that I do buy into is that dwarf galaxies contain dark matter, whereas globular clusters do not. Another good distinction is that all of the stars within the globular cluster would have formed at the same time and have similar properties, whereas in a very small dwarf galaxy, the stars may have formed at different times and would have different ages. This all gets extra confusing when considering that some things, very clearly labeled as globular clusters, like Omega Centauri, have been identified as once being the centers of dwarf galaxies. But I am going to pretend those objects don't exist for this discussion. So let's get back to the Pixis cluster. It's so rinky-dink that if we use the mass criterion, it would qualify as a cluster even though I don't think this is, in general, a good way to tell apart globular clusters and dwarf galaxies. Unfortunately, we cannot apply the dark matter criterion because no one has been able to make measurements of the motions of the stars within the cluster that can be used to measure the cluster's mass, which is the best way to identify the presence of dark matter. However, all of the stars in the Pixis cluster seem to have formed about 11.5 billion years ago, which, using the age of the stars criterion, would point to this object definitely being a globular cluster and not a really, really small dwarf galaxy. Having said all of this, the Pixis cluster's really weird orbit implies that it was once within a larger dwarf galaxy that fell into the Milky Way a very, very long time ago. As far as anyone can tell, that dwarf galaxy has been completely absorbed into ours and it's not possible to see any traces of it aside from the Pixis cluster and its really weird orbit. This cluster is not the first such globular cluster found to have originated in another galaxy, but it and the few other globular clusters like it can tell us about how the Milky Way would have increased in mass over time by absorbing other galaxies. People are therefore going to continue to study the Pixis Cluster to try to get more insights into the history of gravitational interactions between the Milky Way and the dwarf galaxies surrounding it. And that wraps up my summary of the Pixis Cluster and the location on the Earth's surface corresponding to the position of the Pixis Cluster in the sky is slightly more than 130 kilometers south of Kangaroo Island off the coast of Adelaide, Australia. Kangaroo Island does have kangaroos, but they probably can't swim 130 kilometers south of the island. However, the island does have sea lions, and those can definitely swim 130 kilometers. So if you're in this part of the ocean and see any sea lions from Kangaroo Island, please let me know. The website for this podcast is www.randomastronomicalobject.com. You can visit the website to read information about the astronomical objects, view images of those astronomical objects, look up additional reference information, and send me random feedback. The audio was recorded and edited by George Bendo. The music is Immersion by Sasha Endy at www.sasha-endy.de and the sound effects are from the Freesound Project at www.freesound.org. Thanks for listening.